SAT prep, test prep map. Um, this problem I'm going to look at, a lot of people have thought that this problem is very hard because this is dealing with an imaginary number. And an imaginary number is uh, looked at complicated, uh, is looked at as if it's complicated. And the reason it is looked at as if it is complicated is because usually you have to solve it. But if you look at this, all you have to do is really find the sum of this number and this number, and you cannot mix like terms. So you're going to have to take away your brackets and you're gonna find when you do that, it's a lot easier than you think. Okay, and I just wrote some notes here. I, when it's slanted like this, um, usually in your textbooks, it'll kind of be like this. Uh, but anyway, I equals imaginary. And an imaginary number is part of the complex number system, as I've already said. And you have two different rules here. I squared, meaning imaginary number squared, is going to give you negative 1 without the bracket. And this is going to give you, I regular, is going to give you the square root of negative 1. Why is it doing that? Because this is the only time when you're in the imaginary number system, like you're flying over to Tinker Hollow or something to meet Tinker Bell and doing math. This is the only time you can do something this way. And in your Algebra 2 textbooks, they make you solve. This is a simple SAT problem. You don't have to. And by the way, this came from the SAT. So your first step was to, was to remember what complex numbers were, this imaginary number. Now that you see that, you know instantaneously you had brackets here and brackets here, so we took them off. You cannot combine these terms. And remember that once you have the brackets, you'd have to solve this plus this. A lot of people will do distributive, and you can do that, but just remember that when you're doing the distributive property, when, if and when you distribute, you're going to distribute to get negative 1. You're not going to distribute each term like this 7 plus this 9i. So that's why I said here, remove the parentheses, because pretty much if you remove the parentheses, you're going to be able to get what you do for this problem. Okay, once you remove it, uh, we'll go on to the next slide. You're going to have 7 plus negative 8. Remember your negative number here. This is negative 1 because this number is higher. It takes on negative 1. And then these are just straight added. There's no negatives. They're both positive, positive 9, positive 12. So do you see? That's easy. So your choice is negative 1, 12i, so you have a. This problem that was on the SAT, uh, real SAT, if you pull up some of the SATs that are on the college board, they won't give you the answers, but here's one here. Okay, and it really is similar. Okay, this is very easy, but what happens here is people want to do all these variable distributions here, and they make it harder, and then they choose four. And it looks like it would be 4 because if you were to put like something over here and go 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 minus 1, you know, you think about it, why can't it be 4? But people will solve and try it anyway. People all say 9 minus 1 is a 8 divided by 3 doesn't equal 3. You know, you've got to really think about what you're doing and people just go ahead and say, okay, well, if I displace this 3 over here, and then I do it times the whole thing, and I put this k as 3, I'll get 3y minus 3 over 3. Okay, that's fine. Do it that way, but make sure that you cancel out all these 3s so that this becomes y minus 1 equals 3. Okay, and be careful because this 3 didn't have, so this 3 had to be multiplied because this 3 did not cancel out the other 3. So this is then 9. If you remember to do it this way, fine, do it simple and easy. If not, let's go through the steps. First, you substitute the value of k, that is 3. Then you want to go ahead and you want to take 
three by each side and this is where you get complicated because most people are inclined to do what I did on the last slide which is go three Y and make this minus three okay all you're doing is doing your threes here and this that keep this simple if you cancel out the three here multiply the three here and you take it to both sides you still have this three and that's three times three is nine so this is what I'm talking about and what you do and I just went over here and did this three over three is equal to one so you end up with y minus one equals nine and this got canceled out this is a one and this is a one and even if you distribute it one y one times y is one y minus one times negative one is still going to be negative one so here's what's happening so you have y minus one because remember this guy is gone these are gone so it's y minus one you can even go like this and say over one okay over one if you want to y minus one is is nine now can you see the answer clearly a little bit more clearly because all you have to do is now solve you take the additive inverse just remember it's the inverse nothing is being divided so you take positive one on both sides and this was done for you okay it's called the additive inverse which you guys have been learning at least for three years now uh, and so this is negative one plus positive one is zero nine plus one is 10 so y equals 10 get on with your lives this is, answer is d okay and if there are any questions remember we're at jacobitslearning at gmail.com good luck on your sats